Hello, friends. I'm Randy Smith, the co-founder of CUInsight.com and host of the CU Insight Experience podcast. And today I have the honor of getting being joined by Gigi Hyland, the, the executive director of the National Credit Union Foundation. Uh, Gigi, thanks for being with me today. Oh, my goodness, Randy. It's so great to see your face. Thanks for the invitation and um, hope you and yours are staying well. It's so nice to connect with you. So thanks. Oh, I was I was excited to see your face as well. It seems like we just saw each other at GAC, but that seems like a lifetime ago. <laughs> so, so much has changed. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. That was eight weeks ago. And it, it, agreed. You know, it feels like decades ago. I, yeah. Amazing. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is well. This this should we should have still have some fun as we always do when we're when Absolutely. we're together. So let's just jump right into it. Why we're here today? Three questions with Gigi Island. All right. Uh, first question. Uh, we're living through quite a. I was just talking to you about this before we hit record, but a, quite an interesting shared experience currently. What are you and in, in your team at the foundation doing uh, to you know support credit unions and, and to help out the members during this? Uh, COVID-19 crisis. <laughs> yeah, I love your term, a shared, unique experience around the world. So a very, very different. Um, so we're doing a couple of things. You know, I think as, um, as credit union leaders, as all of us as credit union leaders, I think what was really important for us first is to kind of step back and figure out what are we really good at? What are our superpowers in this? And uh, like you, I've been through a lot of crises and you just have to step back and kind of think about what value can you add and not add to the noise. And so uh, we stood up a COVID resource page like many other of our system partners have, but our resource page is really focused on member financial health and employee financial health and well-being and cooperative values. So if you think about our three pillars of work, it's really ignite and inspire. Those two pillars are really where we're focusing. And what may seem you know, a little bit ironic to your viewers and your listeners is that you're not really hearing about CUA. And here's why, you know, the, the world, the credit union world knows me as being very transparent. We really looked at CUA early in March and went to my board and you know, went to our governance committee and said, you know, CUA wasn't built for this. Yep. CUA was really built for a time when part of the country is in pain, the rest of us are fine, and we come to help the rest of the rest of the, the that part that's hurting. And it's just, um, it, you know, it's a, little, it's a little daunting to think about that we can't leverage CUA for this. And we know that June 1st is right around the corner, which is the beginning of hurricane season. We know there are probably going to be wildfires. We know that there are going to be hurricanes. And we need to be ready for that because that's our superpower. So Absolutely. we are, you know, we stand ready with CUA and um, we want to be there for credit union employees if heaven forbid a disaster strikes and they need that aid. And, and we'll be there for them. So to answer your question, we're doubling down on Ignite and Inspire. So there's yeah. a resource page that everybody can go to. We've got a lot of blog posts around how you think about helping members with the stimulus check. What does that look like? How do you help them weather through this? How do you think about savings, which almost doesn't seem really intuitive right now, but you know, savings right now is not putting it aside. Savings is save it for a couple of weeks because that $250 that you can save now might help you pay, you know, whatever you need to pay a, a couple of weeks down the road. So it's really more of a liquidity um, thing right now. So, you know, doing that. And then just to provide a teaser, um, next Tuesday, we're going to be launching a little video um, series. And uh, so just keep your eye out for that. But again, it's a way of using our superpowers to convene, to connect, to keep us human, to remind us of who we are as credit unions and why um, we can get through this together. We will, we'll make sure to link to that or even embed the video into to, to this one. Uh, that sounds the great. Post for this one. So that's awesome. Thanks. I can't wait to see it. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I mentioned before we started recording also that I noticed the, I, and I thought it was a, a awesome, this content that you and your colleagues are putting out about financial education right now, because it is so important. And I, I think you made an awesome point, to, that idea that we're, we, we might not be talking long term here. It's not college savings or retirement. It's like, how do you budget this money in an uncertain time, right? Like uh, for right. the next rent payment or whatever it happens to be. So it's great right. information. That's for sure. Uh, thinking ahead, how, how, how do you think this will like this will affect credit unions in the long term? Do you think, uh, you know, the way the way we do business in the long run? Yeah, so I think I think there are two parts of that one right now, you know, I think it's really important for all of us to remember that it's key to connect and it's key to show vulnerability. That's, that's okay. 
And, you know, one of the things we're doing to try to lay the groundwork for the future is uh, we're leveraging the DE network and we're having these cooperative conversations with yeah. DEs. And it's just like groups of 15 DEs a couple times a, a week. And it's really meant to gather those stories and to share ideas, but also to be vulnerable with each other. And that, that supportive sort of um, network is really critical for that future state. It really helps to, to say, okay, here's what I'm going through now and you know, help me get through this. But it's also, what can we think about as we move forward? So the future state, you know, I think more than ever, financial health and well-being, it, it's really clear now how much credit unions need to triple down on that. And it, you know, that is, it's a complex thing because it's, it's very longitudinal, as you and I have talked about. You know, we knew that people were financially fragile before this crisis hit, and this crisis is sh shining a monster spotlight on people's financial fragility. When we know that businesses only have about 27 days of capital, we know, when we know that people live paycheck to paycheck, this is, again, highlighting all of that. So credit unions have this amazing opportunity to do what they do best. And I think for credit unions, it's thinking through how do you leverage what we know is happening right now? And how can we help people get out of this crisis? How can we help people plan better for the next time? How can we give employees a sense of security regarding um, their jobs and their financial well-being? So it's all of those things packaged together. And there are, as you know, there are a lot of resources that the foundation provides. Um, Feline has done some great research. We're a partner with the Financial Health Network. I mean, the resources are there. Now it's helping credit unions connect the dots as they move forward. And really, again, that's where we, that's where we will be going as we continue this journey as a foundation. Um, so it's thinking about the lessons we're learning and how can we make sure that we prepare people better next time. Uh, I think for credit unions is, you know, how do you think about your business model? And I know you probably, you'll hear this, I'm sure, from others who are, um, you know, equally plugged into that. But how do you think about, you know, really making sure that folks have the digital tools that they can, that they need? to manage and feel like they're connected to their money so that people don't feel like they need to hoard cash, that they feel like they're in control of their finances and that they feel like they can weather through this from a liquidity standpoint. You know, that's the big part right now is do I have enough money to get through this? If my hours have been cut, if my partner spouse doesn't have a job anymore, has been furloughed, how do I get through this? Uh, so, you know, all of those issues and uh, through all of that, the wrapper around this Andy is empathy. Um, yeah, it's, you know, Randy, this is the, the most important time to focus on how do you, how do you put yourselves in the shoes of another? What are the questions that you need to ask to understand all of the things that your either member or employee who's standing in front of you or in Zoom is feeling, seeing, hearing, doing, saying, because that's where you connect from a human perspective and that's where you can anticipate what the need might be. And that's where you can be that trusted advisor that builds loyalty, that builds engagement, and that builds ROI eventually. Yeah, so, right. uh, all, yeah, so all those things we've been talking about, um, you know, the, the chicken is roosting. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, yeah. um, those, are, those are all opportunities. And I don't mean to make light at all of the crisis, no, no, but no. there is opportunity here and there is good that we can do. And there's a lot of good that needs to be done. So, and credit unions are perfectly positioned, I think, to do that. Absolutely. And I think what you say is so important because we do have to think past, right? Like we, we have to react and pivot immediately, but we also need to make sure that we're like, we're learning from this and moving forward. And what is, what does that look like? And what can we do? Uh, last question, last of the three, how are you doing sure. personally? Um, what have you, what's been uh, keeping you sane through this project? Uh, we, we wanted to add this question because we're all kind of, again, experiencing this together. So any tricks, any hacks, uh, What's been keeping you healthy? Uh, well, so here's not here. It's not going to surprise you at all. So number one, you know I love to cook. So I've been doing a lot of cooking, um, and mostly things that are very sort of basic cooking. So making like a big pot of spaghetti sauce, making a soup, things that are going to last a long time, that are really healthy, that don't cost a lot to make. So you know, lentil soup, vegetable soup, really healthy things that just have a long runway that we keep eating for out, throughout the whole week. And then getting outside and actually, um, you know, being, being, um, being physical. So I'm very fortunate, feel very blessed that I have a garden outside that I can go and I can pull weeds, I can, you know, move mulch, I can plant things, I, but I can really, so staying really physically active um, is really yeah. important for my, 
mental state. It always is, but I'm really kind of tripling down on it. So it's, you know, working out in the morning, try to get out in the garden in the afternoon, and then probably doing some yoga in the evening. So a lot of physical activity. And then last but not least, and again, your audience would be disappointed if I didn't say this, but it is spring bird migration season. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> every day, every day, there's a new little bird that shows up. And so I am outside with my, well, here you go, with my binoculars right, there. <laughs> and right next to me yeah. Um, yeah. to listen, to hear, to document what's going on. So um, I, you know, for me, that is, that soothes my soul like nothing else. And so I, I, I can't imagine Randy going through this, uh, like in, I don't know, like November or December yeah, to me, it's yeah. it, talk about a blessing that it's the spring and that at least things are starting to get warm and the, you know, the flowers are blooming. So, um, to me that, that is a huge blessing and I'm taking advantage of it every single moment that I can. <laughs> so there you I go. Don't, I don't yeah. blame you. Cooking, a, cooking outside and burning. Those are my, those are my things. <laughs> We, we actually had a couple sunshiny 60 degree days in Connecticut here Monday and Tuesday and it made me so happy uh -huh. just to feel the sun and get out and walk so I am with you there too. Uh, last, last, any final thoughts for us before we move on? So you know as a foundation we are here to inspire and we are stronger together. We can get through this together. We will get through this together. This is not our first crisis. It, yes, it looks different, um, but we can get this done and um, we will we will support each other and um, you know stay positive. Stay positive, be there, show up, um, stay present, and we'll get through this together. So, well, yeah. Thank you again, Gigi, so much for taking time out of your busy day. We're in, in between Zoom calls, I'm sure. And uh, we will link to everything uh, that you mentioned today. And I can't wait to see those videos in the, the post that accompanies this. And uh, finally, I can't hope, I cannot wait for once we're able to move freely again and get to, to see you in person. Agreed. I can't wait for that either. And may that day come sooner than later. So um, stay, stay well. And again, thanks for the opportunity, Randy. It's great to see you. Stay healthy, Gigi, and we'll talk soon. Sounds good.